Now, I did a teaching a long time ago about will babies be raptured to heaven, actually. And there have been some Bible-believing Christians and preachers who actually came up with a new revelation with verses that are actually better about babies being raptured to heaven. And so what I did was is that because this is becoming a trend that's growing and Bible believers are really interested in the subject, and not only that, it is a genuine question and concern of people, especially when things are getting crazier and we're thinking that this is the end and the rapture might happen any moment, because we've been getting a lot of emails on that too. And then uh, my video, it did answer the question, but it did not seem as satisfactory. So I hope that this video would be more satisfactory as an answer. So we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and then verse 15. So this is the famous rapture passage. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Look at verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right? So then notice that the dead are being resurrected and raptured up to heaven. Right? Now look at the next category over here. You'll notice that the verse says, then we which are who? Alive, Alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Where are we going? to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's why we're able to comfort one another. So notice over here, who's the category? The people who die, and they get, uh, when they get resurrected, they go up to heaven. Then the next category that you see over here is concerning those which are, notice, alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Now go to Romans chapter 7. We're going to look at Romans chapter 7. So notice over here, it's those who are alive, right? Those who are alive will be raptured up to heaven to be with the Lord. Okay, so let's look at the book of Romans chapter 7. So this is very, very enlightening over here, which is uh, eye-opening. And this was discovered by some Bible-believing preachers, actually. So this is actually very good. We're going to look at the book of Romans chapter 7, and then we'll read verse 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all matter of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. Okay, so notice over here that when we had knowledge of right and wrong, see that? When we start to have knowledge of what's right and wrong, that's when we became dead. That's why we were dead in trespasses and sins. But who's considered to be alive over here? Let's read verse 9. For I was alive with what? Without the law once. Notice you're considered to be alive when you did not have knowledge of right and wrong. So, uh, I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, what happened? Sin revived and I died. See, so notice over here that you became dead when you start to have knowledge of what's right and wrong. Ah, so then over here at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we see that those who are alive are those who are raptured, correct? Is that what we read? Amen. Yeah, so they get raptured up to heaven if they are uh, considered to be alive. Now, if they're considered to be alive and then they can go to heaven that way, look at Ro Romans 7 says, those who are considered to be alive are those who do not have knowledge. They do not have knowledge of sin. They're considered to be innocent. This, so babies, they don't have knowledge of sin, obviously, right? If that's the case, what are they considered to be? Alive. alive. And then God says that those who are alive, they get what? They get raptured up to heaven. Amen. All right, the next one you want to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, please. We're going to look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So that's very comforting over here. 
Now we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Another category of people that we see that are considered to be raptured up to heaven are those who are not forbidden to go to the kingdom. So notice that those who are not forbidden to go to the kingdom of God are those who will also be raptured up to heaven. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is another famous rapture passage. Look at verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither uh, doth corruption inherit in corruption. So notice that God forbids, see, where it's corruption, flesh and blood. But these people are not forbidden to go to heaven. The following is verse 51 through 53. Those who are saved. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, uh, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Amen. Now notice over here that verse 52, 53, that's a rapture. The dead is transformed. They go up to heaven. If you look at verse 51, it says, we shall not all what? Sleep. So it's not just the dead, it's those who are alive who are going to be changed. So who's forbidden? Forbidden is verse 50. But verse 51, 52, 53 are not the ones considered not forbidden to enter where? At verse 50, the kingdom of God. All right? Now, who else qualifies? Go to Matthew 18. I'm going to go to Matthew 18. Who else qualifies? Ooh, I gave it away right there. Who else qualifies that's not forbidden to go to the kingdom of God? How about that? All right, so we're going to look at the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 18. Verse 3, verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye com be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now also look at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. We're going to look at the book of Luke, and then we're going to look at chapter 18. So notice what the Bible talks about concerning about children. At verse 16, verse 16. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me. See, let them come to him. He says, let, allow them. And what? Forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. How about that? See, so notice that uh, they're not forbidden to go into the kingdom of God. Jesus says, let them in. Look at verse 17. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, look at this, shall in no wise enter therein. So why are the babies and little children who don't have knowledge of the gospel allowed to go to heaven? It's because they're not forbidden by Jesus Christ, he says. Now another one, another one is go to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Here's another passage that would show that children, that they do get raptured up to heaven. Those who do not have knowledge of the gospel. Because it is very interesting how the word of God words it. Look at Romans chapter 8. And then we'll read verse 16. Verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the what? Okay. Children of God. That's important. So these are children who belong to God. Okay? They belong to God. Let's keep reading. And if children, see if you're children, then what? 
heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we, that we may be also what? Glorified. Glorified together. Now look at this, this glory is the rapture. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the what? Glory, glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the what? Sons. Sons of God. So notice that we're being transformed here. There's a manifestation, transformation, being children. This is a rapture. Verse 21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the what? Redemption, Redemption of our body. Amen. So this is undoubtedly talking about the rapture up to heaven. Amen. When we're raptured up to heaven over here, uh, according to Romans chapter 8, the verse says the qualification is if you're children who belong to God. Is that correct? That's why they're called to glory. Now look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And then we'll read verse 4. Colossians chapter 3. And then we'll read verse 4. Notice what our blessed King James Bible reads over here. You'll get enlightened enlightening riches from that precious holy book Amen. more than any other book in the entire world all right let's look at the book of colossians chapter 3 verse 4 this is undoubtedly the rapture look at this when christ who is our life shall appear then shall he also appear with him in where glory. in glory so that is undoubtedly the rapture over here so notice over here that in this rapture that we appear with him in glory. Okay, if you're children who belong to God, there is a what? There is a redemption of the body, which is undoubtedly the rapture. And then it becomes more clear where it says glory. We're going to go to glory. And then Colossians 3, 4 mentions that when he appears, we're going to appear with him in glory. So that's undoubtedly a rapture. Now, I want you to go to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Now, look what Jesus says over here. This is very interesting. He does not consider them to be lost. He does not consider to be belonging to the devil, these children that belong to the devil. He actually owns, uh, he actually claims ownership and shows them that they actually, these children belong to him and that they automatically qualify for heaven. Amen. Look at this, Matthew chapter 18. We'll read verse 2. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you. Now look at this. Is he pointing out this child? That's the point at verse 2, right? This little child that's brought to him what is he going to point out? He's actually going to point out that it's like a physical, literal child here. Not just like a spiritual child of God. As a matter of fact, the only reason why you become spiritual children of God is because when you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, your first stage is actually children. And Jesus Christ, that's why he'll mention the spiritual child of God comparison with physical, literal children. Why? Because physical, literal children are automatically qualified for heaven. And we'll see that here because verse two, look at this. Verse 2, he's setting a physical, literal child. Yeah. Now look at this comparison, how he acts it out over here. It's as if this little child, so this little child he's pointing out, tell me by his language if Jesus thinks that this little child is going to heaven, automatically qualifies for heaven. Verse 3, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 5, And whoso shall receive one what? Such, Such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck. Now notice that hell is mentioned at verse 8 and 9. See that? The opposite of hell is heaven. So he's comparing a contrast with heaven and hell. Why? 
those who are anti-children go to hell. But those who are pro-children or follow the children's example. Which children's example? The little physical, literal child example. They qualify for heaven. That's what you see this contrast and comparison. But let's keep reading. Verse 10. Take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Wow. Look at verse 14. 14. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that what? One of these little ones should perish. Now, do you think that this physical, literal child Jesus is talking about? Yes. Second thing, do these little physical, literal children he's pointing out, uh, do they sound like they belong to God or to the devil? To God, right? So from this context and language over here, Jesus Christ automatically considers these children who belong to God. That is undoubtable when you read that passage. He doesn't indicate that these are people who go to hell. It's actually the opposite. It's the opposite of being a child. That's the thing. It's something that's anti-children. Now, Romans 8 says that you are children who belong to God, right? What happens to children who belong to God? They get raptured. That's why. So then notice over here that, I mean, if you read the language of Matthew 18 and compare that with Romans 8, it's very doubtable that you would argue that these children do not, physical little children, do not belong to the Lord. That's right. When you read from the language over there. So the only, uh, so then people obviously ask, what's the limit, right? What's the limit? The limit where it becomes out, out of that childish mentality is according to Romans 7. It says when you have knowledge of what's right and wrong. Yeah. But see, God says little ones. See, little ones don't know much better. So that uh, even our justice system is built in a different way. They go all the way to 18 or even a little older than that sometimes. So notice over here that the Lord, he already uh, mentions that uh, children, they have a different level in thinking compared to natural adults. And God considers them as belonging to him. And then if you're a child that belongs to God, according to Romans 8, you're automatically raptured. That's the thing. But here's another interesting example. Go to Rome, Revelation 12. We're going to look at the book of Revelation chapter 12. Now, this is a very interesting picture that I find. So then we notice that Revelation is about the tribulation, right? So Revelation is about the tribulation timeline. But this is what I find interesting. There is a woman with child here. Now, this is what really impressed my heart. A lot of people do not know who the child is. There are several theories. The traditional inter interpretation, which is what I use, is that it's referring to Jesus. But then there are other people who mention that the child could be re referenced to a hero figure, a savior figure that's going to come out in the tribulation, or it could be reference to David, or it could be reference to the 144,000. We don't know. But here is something interesting. There is no doubt when you read the Bible, the Lord, he has a favoritism concerning children. Yeah. That is undoubtable. For example, with Jonah's case, when he judged the city of Nineveh, he mentioned about the little children who don't know right hand or left. Uh, Matthew 18, it is very apparent. Jesus Christ, uh, he, uh, he loved the little children and would consider them as qualified for heaven. David, whose baby died, uh, he mentioned that the child went, uh, went to, uh, went to uh, glory, that he's automatically qualified for salvation. So because of that, there's no doubt the Lord, he has a favoritism with children that would, be, uh, that would go to heaven, so to speak. That's the idea. But look at this one. This is pretty interesting. So in Revelation chapter 12, verse 2, the woman with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered, right? So the child is born. Now look at verse 4. This is Satan. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. 
And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now look, Satan wants to devour the child. Right. But before he can devour the child, it's very interesting how it's worded at verse 5. She brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was automatically what? Caught, Caught up unto God and to his throne. Raptured. So the dragon cannot put his wrath upon the child. So then who does he put the wrath on? The woman. So in verse, uh, let's see over here, verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. So notice that the dragon, all he could do was put his rage, his persecution upon the woman. The child escaped it. The child was raptured up to heaven. Now, whether you want to argue the child is Jesus, 144,000, it don't matter. This is what I find interesting. God uses a picture of woman and child, and he puts the grown adult in the tribulation. But then with the child, he puts the child where the child can run away from the devil's wrath. So, that's what, so, so that is intensely, in, why would he use a picture like that? God would put a picture like that which shows God's mentality, his character, how, how he thinks about children. Oh, that's good. Why would he have a tendency or something in his mind about a child being raptured and escaping Satan during the tribulation? So that's very interesting. That's what I find intensely interesting. You've you got to understand this. When people use symbols or pictures, that shows them what they mentally think, what they, what they, what they consider about those exact symbols, what their favoritisms, their preferences lie about symbols. If you're going to use a woman as an example or a child as an example, it shows in your unconscious heart what you favor about them or what you think about them. And in God's unconscious mind over here, so to speak, he has this thing about a child where it's raptured and escapes the devil's wrath during the tribulation. That's what I find intensely interesting. So if that's God's unconscious mind, so to speak, because that's how you develop pictures, it's from your unconscious mind. There's a reason why you would draw it that way or use that symbolism in some way. So why in the world would God do that from his unconscious mind, so to speak? Amen. That's intensely interesting. So I think here that uh, these cases over here would show that the Lord, he would have a tendency to rapture babies up to heaven over here, or children who have no knowledge of right and wrong. The only thing that you can go against this teaching is concerning about the book of Matthew 24, where it talks about woe unto them that are with child in those days and those that give suck. But the simple answer to that is this. The simple answer is, look, during seven years of the tribulation, if that's how long it is, and you got uh, billions of people on this earth, are you telling me they're not going to get pregnant and give birth again? Yeah, so that's going to be obviously natural. So I don't see that as a proof text that debunks this, actually. It could be that the Lord, he raptures up these children, these babies up to heaven, and then it just happens that people just give birth again after that, yeah. which is obviously natural. Do you know how many babies are born every day? <laughs> every single day. So I hope that this teaching has been a blessing to some of the people who have a consideration for babies and children.